What's up, guys? It's your boy, Toon Dollars. And today, you guys should call me the hood historian because we're going to tackle a very important subject to me. Your boy was born and raised in North Philadelphia. And the street that I'm standing on right now is called American Street. Right now, American Street is going through a heavy facelift. It's going through a makeover, guys. Gentrification is hitting this community heavy. I recall as a young youth visiting community meetings uh, that were basically providing plans to us, the residents of the community, giving us an idea of what it was going to look like in the projected future. What we're gonna do today is, I'm gonna take you down a walk through American Street, and I'm gonna point out notable things that are here now, and I'm also going to point out lots and things that I know for sure are gonna get taken over and gentrified. And the sad thing is, if you're a lifelong resident of the community like myself, it puts a warm spot in my heart like a heavy spot it, it it's kind of hurtful guys it's kind of hurtful to see my neighborhood changing as fast as it's changing and not only is the neighborhood in a structural form changing but the residents are changing at a rapid pace so for starters we are on the 1400 block of american street and this building that's behind me at one point it was abandoned now it's currently called the crane building and it's lost and art studios. Yes, they host programs for adults, students, and all walks of life. This lot right here behind me, it was once an empty lot. Guess what? It, it's bought and owned right now. They are going to create something called the Clay Studio. It's basically gonna be like a large complex, like a large, what would you call that? Like a condo, a condominium. Let's give you a better look up close and personal. Check it out. That's pretty much the idea, the plans for this lot that was once uncared for. Anybody that was an outsider did not want to come to this side of the city. American Street is located probably five minutes from Center City, about 10 minutes from South Philly. It's located probably 15 to 20 minutes away from West Philly and maybe 20, 25 minutes from Northeast Philadelphia and maybe five minutes from Fishtown, which would be considered East Philadelphia. So we're in the heart of North Philly. And check it out, that's one sign of gentrification, guys. Yup, it's coming and it's coming fast. What they do is they take old abandoned buildings and they restore them and they revive them and bring them back to life. This Philly homebrew outlet, nope, wasn't here before. 15, 20 years ago, that was just an empty garage. New owners came and they put a brewery there. This lot right here, check it out. We're on the 1500 block of American Street. That was once an empty lot. Now they're building homes. Somebody bought it, investors bought it. That right there was once an empty lot. Again, they're building homes at such a rapid pace. This wasn't an industrial avenue. Industrial meaning back in the early 1900s, this was like a railroad, a railroad track. You see how this is asphalt? Back in the day, before I was born, this went down like a concave. It probably went like 10, 15 feet down and that side went 10, 15 feet down. And this was a raised railroad where all of the industrial factories that were on the left and the right side of American Street used to get shipping, receive and, and send, send shipping. So when Philadelphia fell in the industrial age, you know, we were one of the most uh, recognizable industrial cities. This was all filled up. Back in the day, to my knowledge, cars used to be thrown back here and burnt like down here like down there i'm saying down because it was actually uh a separate height until they filled it up i'm not sure exactly what year they filled it up but yeah just give you an idea all of these weren't here that wasn't there that wasn't there these are all new these are within the past five years tops over here you see it you see the new constructions coming now those constructions are on the opposite side but i promise you this side of American Street facing this way will also get new construction as well. So as we walk down, you're going to continue to see empty lots on the right and on the left of you. You see that lot right there? What does that lot right there say? That lot says huge development opportunity. That's for investors. They want to sell, 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 sell. One of the most powerful things that they're doing, in my opinion, to American Street, they are removing the railroad tracks and they're replacing the railroad tracks with center islands. Yes, guys, check it out, Center Islands. It's amazing because American Street was known for these railroad tracks. If you're from the neighborhood, you know, you know American Street was a nice, wide, uh, desolate 
quiet street in a sense. This is the street that I learned how to drive. At nine years old, I learned how to drive on this street. An automatic car, and then at 13, I learned how to drive a stick shift car, the RX-7 on this street in 1985, right? Check it out. Now, they're taking out the center railroad tracks and they're putting islands. I'm assuming that the islands are gonna have planters in it, maybe. That right there wasn't there, again. People over the last decade, maybe two decades, last 20 years or so, because we're about to hit 2020, came in. These guys got lucky because these guys got it a bit earlier. They did like a pre-fab shack. They got it a bit earlier. They got it before gentrification hit heavy. So who knows what they got that lot there for. But that's been there for probably an easy decade, at least 10 years. On this side, most of these buildings are still there. They have not changed. These buildings have been there for quite some time. For example, that building over there where you see is green and you see how it has the gate open. Whoever took over the location kept the front facade, they kept the front face and they just decided to, you see, how they ended up keeping it so that they can still, I guess, close off the property. Check it out and they got it gated off. I won't be surprised if this has been purchased because you see how the gates are around it. The gates around it could mean that it was already purchased and they're ready to do renovations soon. And again, you guys can see the center islands. This right here, this was probably made, I would say, yeah, within the last 18 to 20 years, I would say in 2000 or so, maybe, yeah, give or take that was made and it wasn't Newman's Kitchen. I forgot what it was, but it was another company. And I actually have a story, um, quick story. Let me, let me make it short. When I was a teen, probably 1920, my friend Andy, Nilo, and Walt were on their way to Bloomsburg University for a college trip. They were gonna go and hang out and do like a little party. And I was invited, I wasn't able to make it because I got a cramp in my neck very, very last minute, about an hour or two before I was supposed to go. I didn't go to that trip. A few hours later, I got a call from my buddy Nilo that they got into an accident and they were injured and it was a bad accident. That same day that they got into that accident, a buddy of mine from high school got into an accident here. They were driving up this one, like, you know, it's a double side. It was one lane going that way, one lane going down this way. They were driving down this lane. A drunk driver was coming up this lane and went up the one way and crashed right into them head on. And my buddy died right there, guys. My buddy Esteban died right there. There used to be a memorial there for him. And look at guys, check out the lots, you see? You're gonna notice many, many lots. Again, all these empty lots are gonna get taken over in no time. And what's tough is that you see the people like behind me, check them out. See that person behind me? Can you, can you? Can you see them? No, you can't see them. These people, they're not from this neighborhood. They're not even from the city. A lot of the time you can tell they are not from the city. And the sad part is when they see people like me, they tend to clench up, stiffen up. Um, I don't know. I feel like they feel alarmed when they see someone like me, but I'm the lifelong resident here. I should feel alarmed seeing them, but <laughs> that's how it goes, guys. Check out behind me. You see behind me, there's that whole lot. There's a whole lot, probably maybe a whole block, block or so. I promise you that that block or so that's empty now will get bought out and renovated soon. Part of me also thought that what they're doing here in the street, they're not only adding an island, part of me believes they may be adding some plumbing because I see at the corner of every block on American Street, they're doing like gutter work, like drain gutter work. So it's a good possibility that that lot right there, this lot right here, is gonna get bought out. It's gonna get bought out, see? And what they're gonna do is they're gonna make, again, if it's not apartments, condos, lofts, something, they're gonna put something there to fill the empty space. Because like most metropolitan cities, Space is valuable. And they're trying to get everybody to move to Philadelphia. The other day I heard on the radio, which blew me away, it was shocking, when I was on the way to drop off my lady to work, that Philadelphia is considered the number one city in America. Say what? Since when? And why? They mentioned something about, oh, since the Eagles won, that it brought great value to the city. I mean, I can tell the second the Eagles won, the next day you saw buildings getting renovated immediately like they got the building permits and they started immediately working on them which is a sad shame that now people want to consider this neighborhood valuable when 15 20 30 years ago it was considered invaluable
So as we walk down American Street, on the left hand side, you're gonna see this food service LLC wholesale cash and carry on the 1800 block of American Street. That's been there for quite some time, probably as long as I can remember that's been there. And that used to be a food uh, wholesale spot. Now, let me tell you something. It was filled with 18 wheelers and, and equipment. It was packed. That yard from side to side was packed. The past year or so, it's been empty. I believe the company has moved. And right now, we could take a look right there. There's a lease sign for sale or lease, something of that nature, which means there's a good chance that they're willing to sell for the right price. Check it out over here. This, this has been here for quite some time also. This is the Kitchen and Bath American Metal Molding Corporation. They sell kitchen and baths like countertops, marble, granite, etc., etc. This has been here for a good bit of time. However, this Philadelphia sign is brand new. That Philadelphia sign was not there. That came probably, I would say, within the last five years. They put that Philadelphia sign there. And I see many, many people coming to take pictures right there, guys. Look, at you see what I'm talking about, the plumbing? Remember I said that I think they're, they're running pipes? Look at that. You see, they're running pipes and look how deep they're digging. You see right here, matter of fact, that's a prime example. You see how many feet they're going below? Like nobody, if you're from the city of Philadelphia, nobody has seen this side of American Street. That's why I say, you know what? I gotta document this. I gotta document this because they're closing it up and covering it up at such a rapid pace that when you come to the city in about 10, 15 years, this block may not look the same. American Street may not be the same American Street that we once remember. Especially when I grew up, when I was a kid here. You see that over there? You see that pipe, right? So they're running pipes. You see it right there again? They're running another pipe. So I believe that they may or may not, I'm, I might stand corrected, they may or may not be running plumbing or drain sewage lines or something. And it wasn't here before, so that's amazing. American Street was where this section of the city would have all of their festive events especially like the Puerto Rican Parade and things of that nature, they would host them on American Street because it was a really wide and empty street. It was desolate. When I was a kid, we used to come ride RC cars here. We used to ride bicycles here. Uh, again, I told you guys that I learned how to drive a car here. It was the go-to street when you needed a big open space to do something. This was the street that we would come to. Right now, I'm at the intersection of American and Burks. One thing to make note of here, behind me you guys see that that blue gate right there you guys see it right that spot was a scrap yard yeah this was once a scrap yard now i'm gonna make an assumption here i'm not sure but i believe the scrap yard was bought out also yeah guys i believe investors came in and potentially bought out the scrap yard because for the last six months to a year the scrap yard has not been in business and they actually cleaned out all of their scrap and all of their equipment yes guys they had a but they, when you were a kid and you came through here, you always saw a gigantic pile. I mean, 30, 40 feet high of metal scrap. And it was always like trucks double parked on this side to go inside and dump their scrap. You don't see any scrap. You don't see any equipment. You don't see nothing. It's just closed and they have a security guard on the inside. My hunch, I have a hunch, right? And my hunch is telling me that that scrap yard got a pretty good penny for this piece of land, which is probably contaminated, might I add, from all the the Freon and all the things they've been scrapping on this land for over 25, 30 years. Because as long as I can remember since I was a kid, that was a scrap yard. This whole block, the whole block right here was a scrap yard. Now, I believe they probably bought it and who knows, they might make more properties here. On the right hand side, you're gonna see the Universal Marble and Granite Company. Again, since this was an industrial avenue, there was many warehouses and factories going down this avenue. Now, that's been there for, yeah, 20 plus years, easily. That's been there for a good bit of time. Uh, what they do is they sell slabs of granite. They're kind of like that business right there, but they're owned by Asians. I don't know if they're gonna sell out. You never know. They might hold on to it for a little bit longer to see how much they can get. Let's take a quick look inside here and see what it looks like since it's open. Check it out. Let's give you a quick sneak peek of what the scrapyard used to look like. Look at that. So I'm pretty sure that that soil is contaminated. The way gentrification works, if you don't know, I made a whole vlog, vlog 214, I talked about gentrification. The way it works is investors will come here and buy lots that are worth nothing, you know, or that have high taxes, and they'll buy the property for dirt cheap, then they'll go invest and build or restore, rehabilitate the property, and then they'll mark it up three, four times the market price 
and sell it to people who want to come to the community. We're on American and Norris. Again, you see that lot right there? That lot belongs to that flat fix over there. There's a flat fix on the corner. Right there. That's a flat fix. That lot belongs to them. And, I'm, and I know for sure that the owner was smart. Because about, I would say, five to maybe seven years ago, when this neighborhood started getting gentrified at a rapid pace, the owner of that tire flat fix made sure to fence in his whole lot because that lot was empty. But he said, look it, ain't nobody gonna come in on my lot and evade. He fenced in the whole lot and now that's a part of his flat fix. So you know what he's waiting for, right? He's waiting to get a million, two, three million dollars for that land so he can retire because he's an old dude already. Check this out on this side. Again, businesses or buildings that are no longer in use. This building right here was turned into a church. I had an uncle that got killed. He got shot with a sawed off shotgun on his back. He died at 22 years old, two weeks before his 23rd birthday. They did his viewing inside this church right here. Those are probably the very few houses that are still on the hood side of American Street. You won't see any other houses going up or down American Street but these. And these are the original standing few. There's seven houses. Check it out. And you see how that says for sale? So who knows if they're trying to sell? You never know. And if, if, if they're not trying to sell, an investor is going to come in and going to make them a pretty penny offer. And for the ones who don't want to stay here, who are already old, who are tired of the neighborhood, who want to move to Florida or move to California or just move someplace warm, they're going to be more than happy to sell. Check out that lot right there. That lot was once empty. Guess what? It's bought out. It's gated up. The second you see gates, if you see gates on the property and you start seeing the bulldozers, you know that they're coming in to start doing work. That's what's happening. And again, this is that flat fix that I was telling you that the owner was smart enough to seal off his whole block. You know that he's going to accept a good offer if they made him an offer for if not half the block, the whole block. You know what I mean? He'll probably sell the flat fix with it. Right now, we're on the 2100 block of American and Diamond Street. American and Diamond has an empty lot right there. That lot was supposed to be a cookie factory at one point. We were told that it was going to turn into a cookie factory. But the thing is, we, and we never saw it. We never saw it turn into a cookie factory. And now it's for rent. I don't know how you could rent a lot. What are they renting the lot or are they renting the building with the lot? All I know is, I promise you, that will be bought out also. And you can see the tracks. You'll go on the sidewalk on certain businesses and you'll see the tracks where there was once railroad tracks. That's because back in the industrial day, like in the 1900s, when they used to ship and do shipping and receiving all these factories had their own entrances so that all the the stuff that was coming in the cargo can be driven right to the front of the warehouse unload it and then they would go right back onto the track see right here that's a good example you see they entered here they came here dropped off the cargo then they went and they probably switched right back over there they cut it off right there but that's because the modern age this is chase foods I should knock on the door and tell them to go vegan, but that's none of my business, right? Check it out. This was probably rehabilitated, I would say, within the last 15 years, that building was rehabilitated. Within the last 20 years, tops, this building was redone because that wasn't like that. There was a, a, a factory right here, a factory that was abandoned and empty, and it got burnt down. And this right here, again, was made within the last 15 to 20 years. And what they do is, which happened coincidentally to a lot of buildings on American Street, a lot of them were burnt down. Coincidentally, they all got burnt. And after they got burnt, they got knocked down and sold out. Check this out. This is still an original building. It's pretty original. It's been on American Street for a long period of time. It's been here since I was born. Right now, it's an art and industry studio. So I'm assuming some private people bought it and they turned it into their own studio. And they're like, hey, I don't mind living here, right? So that's pretty cool. I always thought this was a really nice building. It looks beautiful. I would love to have that as the tunography and the, well, no more tunography entertainment, guys. I, I would love to have that as the Beyond the Sky Media Studio, but you know, money talks. This also is an original building and this building has a lot on the side. And guess what, guys? That lot, it was supposed to be like a community garden. 
it looks like these people own it because one day I was coming by here and I saw some ladies from this building over here fixing the garden. You see? Check out the ambulance. Haven't they been making noise for the last eight minutes? Since I've been vlogging, they've been making noise. I don't know how long this garden is gonna last here because I promise you, if somebody comes with a good chunk of change, this lot will be sold and turn into apartments, condos, and or homes for mortgage. This is the bus stop that your boy Toon used to wait at when he was a youngster. Me and Walt used to wait on this side or on that side. That side would take us to the movies to South Philly. This side would take you to the Roosevelt Boulevard. This is the Philadelphia Electric Company, the Susquehanna Station. This station is still exactly the same. It hasn't moved, there hasn't been anything else since. However, I did see, not too long ago, I did see a gentleman up there walking on the top floor. So I don't know if maybe he's the gatekeeper or I don't know if he's the owner. I don't know if somebody bought it and just kept it with the old facade or the old facade, the old building style. Over here is Kofco. Kofco has been there for quite some time. Ever since I was a little kid, Kofco has been here. This is a furnishing and workspace company. This company sells like office supplies as far as like desks, tables, office chairs and stuff like that. This right here is called 2207 through 25 Studios. This was actually taken over probably the last decade. I would say the last 10 years, um, the front face was rehabilitated. They did all the cement work. And I believe they have several small studios in there. They probably have like creative suites. And then they also have a self-defense building right here. See it? Renzo Gracie self-defense that that might stay there for a good period of time I doubt that they're gonna get bought out unless they desire to sell for a high price This right here is an empty lot Again, I believe it belongs to either the right building or the left building But just because these lots. Oh, wow. Why is this car so loud? Why did your car have to be so loud, sir? That's really unnecessary Go green uh I really highly doubt that the owners of the buildings on each side will hold on to the lots forever because when all the land over here goes scarce, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be more than happy to sell. Everything has a dollar on it, guys. Everything has a price. This building right here is still an original building that's been here for many, many years. It's been here since I was a child. Same thing with that cream building that's on the corner. That cream building got turned into a church. So now it's a private church like a Spanish church. I'm not sure if it's Pentecostal or if it's Baptist, but I know it's a Christian church. And this, I saw a group of bikers in it one year, like a large team of bikers. I don't know if they went in there to hang out or they did an event or something, but I haven't seen anybody utilizing it since. And this is that Costco office furniture building that's been here for a very, very long time. When I was a kid, two used to walk up this block, this block right here. And I used to go to elementary school right over there. You can actually see my elementary school from right here. That's Toons Ele Elementary. That's where I went to school at. And when I was a kid, I used to cross this avenue and go straight up that block to go to school. Right now, we're on the 2200 block of American Street in between 23 and 22. And on that corner, you see a building called the American Chair Exchange. That building has been there. That's the original building. Uh, I believe it has different owners from time to time, but it's still the same building. And it doesn't seem to be much activity. This building right here, Yokohama Seafood, this is an original building. It's been here for many, many years. An interesting story about this building is, I recall probably 15 years ago, 14 years ago, it being on the news that a lawyer uh, had rented this location and they rented it, right? And they were uh, harboring hundreds of pounds of marijuana in this building. Yeah, that they did a raid. And when they went inside the building, there was tons of pots of marijuana. So I believe it probably got seized from whoever was renting it at the time. And now it's rented by these Asians who have a seafood company business. This building right here has been here for quite some time. And it's a beautiful building. I admire this building right here. This is a really nice building. Um, it, it's, it's not a business. It looks more or less like a loft of studios. I have never seen any business uh, duties come in and are out of here but then again I'm not always sitting on American Street so I could be wrong this lot right here I promise you will get bought out I promise you that this lot will get bought out and turned into some type of 
a residential property. Now, my question is, I wonder how zoning is gonna work with this avenue because this is zoned as an industrial avenue. If they continue burning down or buying out enough of those industrial buildings to then turn them into private residential homes, who knows? I foresee this being houses. That's what I foresee. And as you notice, they haven't got down here to doing the center islands. I'm sure that those center islands are gonna go all the way up American Street and go all the way down to the north side. Even though the whole American Street, this side that you guys just visited, is located in North Philadelphia, that's the south side of North Philadelphia and American Street. This is the north side of, of, of North Philadelphia and American Street. That's the 57 bus. The 57 bus runs up and down American Street. That'll take you to all the stores in South Philly if you go that way. And this will take you to all, let's say, stores in the north side. And it'll take you past to like Alany and all of that stuff. You see, those are the gutters that I was talking about. Remember I was saying that they're putting gutters on every corner? I think they're renewing all the gutters. Like when you go to the sewage, that's like the sewage pieces. You see them? Those are all going to be in the ground soon. And who knows? These might already have their places on American Street. They just haven't been installed yet. So they're probably already marked and ready to go. You see? Check it out. You see? Made in the USA. And this is solid cement. There's no way you or me are going to pick this up. It's solid cement. But that's just showing you like how serious this is. That building right there has been there for a very long period of time. I don't know what they do in the middle of it. But I know on this side, it's like a, a soda distributor. They sell like beverages and drinks on this side. I don't know if they sell any alcohol, but I do know for sure that they sell like cases of sodas, waters. I'm not sure if they sell candy, but I do know they sell waters and, and sodas and stuff. Let's see. Let's take a look. Beverages, snacks, food service. There you go. And that's been there for a long period of time. Easily the last 15 years, that has been what it is. So now we're on York and American Street. We see another Costco furnishing building. I'm assuming that this building uh, corresponds with the owners of that Costco building I showed you back there. However, uh, they don't really have too much physical activity outdoors. There are gentlemen that work there. I come by from time to time and I see gentlemen outside carrying in cargo, but I don't know if that's their main business front. But again, I'm sure for the right price, they're gonna sell out. There used to be a factory just like that, right here on the corner, but it got burnt down and the last 20 plus years, it's been an empty lot. They painted that mural on it, which is very interesting. That building, again, they do industrial stuff in the sense of large scale deliveries and packages. It's called the American Supply Warehousing Company. So they do US Customs Bonded Public Storage. Wow, they might even do storage in here. So at one time, I'm sure this wasn't a storage building, but with most buildings of this size, what they do is they'll rehabilitate them and then they'll turn them into like storage lofts, the storage units where you can rent space and stash stuff in here. It's a really nice building. I would love a building like that, guys. Who, who gonna buy this building for me? Somebody out there gonna buy this building for me? On this side of American Street, there was once a cheese factory right there. If you would drive through American Street, when I was younger, I recall, you see where these little tents are at? Right there, you see it? You see it? Right now, it's an empty lot. But the cheese factory used to be there. They used to have like uh, pizza cheese or some type of cheese. I don't know what type of cheese, but I know it was cheese. And you would drive down here and it would stink, guys. You would drive down here and it would reek like horrible smell. But then one day, it burned down magically and now it's an empty lot. To my knowledge, the owners of this a low budget car wash that's sitting on the lot have made an agreement with the owner of the property so that the car wash people can wash cars on this property for the meantime i'm assuming until it gets sold because i'm sure money talks and eventually the lot's going to get sold and it's going to get built on that's the lot that your boy tune learned how to willy in remember y'all remember i know you remember 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 and check out the tracks you see the tracks you see how the tracks switch lanes because that's how they used to load cargo. That's why they load the cargo to that building. There's still trucks that come here and load cargo through those gates right there. This right here, obviously, is an empty lot and guys, it's gonna get bought out. Mark my words. It's like 
the Oprah Winfrey show when she was buying everybody a car. It's going to be like that, but with the locks. It's going to be like, you get a house. You get a house. You get a law. You get a house. You get a house. Like, they're just going to buy them all out. Now, this building was connected with the cheese factory. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's the same owners, but this building is still standing, which is pretty cool. I like the size of the building. This is a really neat size, guys. Right now, we're on the 2500 block of American Street. We're going to take a look at this building because many people ask me, like, yo, Tune, why haven't you financed the home yet or mortgaged the home or anything of that nature? I was going to mortgage a home, but you know why I put down mortgage in a home? Because I have desires to get something like this. If I'm going to mortgage anything, if I'm going to get into extreme debt for anything, I already got into extreme debt for education costs, I would love to get something like this. I live in it. If you ask me, your boy Toon will be hosting the box from this little factory right here. This building right here just burned down. There was a large factory again that just burned down probably, I would say, three and a half years, maybe, give or take. I would say three, three years. Within the last three years, this building burned down. Uh, it burned down. It was empty for probably a year and a half. And then they recently demolished it probably like a year and a half ago. And again, it's available. Contact that dude right there if you're looking to buy it. <laughs> if you want to buy two in this, this property right here, feel, feel free. You're more than welcome to come and hang out and have sleepovers. <laughs> but look at what happens is right after they burn them down, they gate them up so that nobody comes in and freeloads. I'll tell you a story about this lot right here. This lot obviously was once a factory, once in his life. Then it was an empty lot for many, many years. The people from the community used to park their cars there or like do little thrift sales, like thrift store, like free, free market sales there. I remember one year, probably like maybe four and a half years ago, that lot, so much noise out here, guys. I remember like four and a half years ago, there was a whole bunch of homeless people. I'm not gonna say homeless, but I would say less fortunate people that were camping out in there with their tents. One time I drove by here and there was probably like 40, maybe 40 tents all in there and there's people hanging in there and I guess, you know, trying to, to create a little community. What happened? I think like some news came or whatever and then somebody from the city of zoning came in, told them they couldn't be there, they had to move all their tents and then they gated it up. They gated it up so that nobody could come and live in there. So again, you see it's gated? It's going to get sold. I promise you it's going to get sold. It's going to get turned into something. This whole avenue, American Street, is not going to look like this in 20 years. It is not. They're going to wean out the original residents of the community and the new residents, which are going to be people who are willing to spend an arm and a leg to live in this community, are going to take over. This community used to retail at about $3,000 to $30,000, $40,000 a home. $30,000, $40,000 a home being on the high end. But on average, homes in this neighborhood were going from ten dollars to probably twenty-five grand. Right now, homes in this community, especially going down to Burks, they're already in the two hundred and fifty thousand to five hundred thousand dollar range for a home, guys. For a three-story row home, five hundred thousand dollars. That's the inflation of gentrification. Gentrification inflates the pricing on everything. And since we have all the convenience of having everything close by, restaurants, trains, schools, parks. The people coming from the suburbs because they want that convenience and they're more than happy to spend top dollar to come live in our neighborhood. These are some houses on American Street. They're not actually on American Street, but they're like little blocks. I didn't really count them as being on American Street because they're not on American Street. This is Kong Fook Farm Trading. This has been here for quite some time. This has been here for many, many, many years. This isn't a new building and who knows, he'll probably sell. He or she, whoever owns that property, guaranteed to sell. This right here is a tire shop. It's like a flat fixed tire shop. That's been there for quite some time. Uh, the hood homies own it. I'm sure you guys saw that before on YouTube. <laughs> Comment below if you know where that building's from. But yeah, that's a flat fixed tire shop. Um, those two blocks, actually, I don't really want to point the camera over there because there's people out there and then you look disrespectful pointing it at them. But those two blocks still host a uh, good maybe two dozen residents. This building right here is the Komar building, 2600 block. It's a beautiful building. I love this building right here. I love it, yo. I'm infatuated with this property right here. And same thing with this property right here. This property right here has been about seven different businesses. This is the most recent business. It's like a mattress, furniture spot on this side and on the opposite side, it's like a mechanic shop. I love 
this property. These are the type of properties that Tune loves. I always talk to Walt about getting something like this. Me and Walt used to have long talks, and I used to tell him, like, dude, I want something like this, dog. Like, this is what I'm trying to get my feet into, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, could you imagine Tune Dollars Studio and something like that? Hey, yo, all my YouTubers welcome. <laughs> Y'all all more than welcome to come and visit Tune Dollars. Look at that building. Doesn't look neat. This is still the original building. All they did was pressure wash it and do the brick pointing. They did that probably, again, 10, 15 years ago. I'm giving you guys rough estimates. I, I don't have exact dates on when this stuff was done. But that's the truth, guys. Check it out. Homeboy right there got a ticket. You see this Wendy's? This Wendy's wasn't always here. This was an empty lot that was connected to that mattress building right there. And there was a small building on here, but that was bought out and it got turned into Wendy's. It was only Checkers and McDonald's here. And Checkers wasn't always Checkers. I forgot the business that was there before Checkers. But Checkers wasn't always Checkers. It was another name. I can't think of it right off the top. My pop told me what it was before. But yeah, on this side, you see Rowdy. Rowdy wasn't there either. There was a big factory. It was a factory like that right there, but it was like right here. And it was probably seven, eight stories high. That factory got burned down also, guys. I actually used to walk by the factory that was here when I was a kid to go to school. I used to go to Hula de Burgos on 8th and Lehigh in 2001, 2002, 2003. And they burnt it down and then Rider came, bought it, and made Rider on it. So right now we are reaching American and Lehigh Avenue, which is still American Street. And this is like the Mecca of North Philly, like where they host our events. And they do like it's it's just a spot like where where it's it's well known. If you talk about North Philly, you talk about American and Lehigh, most people know of this corner right here. There used to be a cousin's supermarket right there. You see where all the graffiti is at? Shout out to Oban and all of them and all of that. Yeah, there used to be a cousin supermarket there. I never liked the cousins, mind you, but it got closed down for health sanitary reasons. That's not surprising. And this avenue right here, there was a different gas station right there before. It was always a gas station, but it was just a different one. It wasn't Luke Oil. You see that AutoZone? That AutoZone was not there. The owner of AutoZone bought a gold mine. Seriously, that AutoZone was not there. It was kind of like, like that yellow flat fix shop that we saw over there. It was something like that right here. It was like three or four small garages and the owners sold it. And they sold it to AutoZone and AutoZone came over and conquered. This plaza right here was probably made within 20, I'll say yeah, 20, 25 years or so. This plaza was made uh, probably in like the mid nineties. It was made, it was an empty lot there. I believe that's the Pastrana Plaza. I'm not too sure, but I think Travis Pastrana or the Pastrana family owns that plaza right, right there. I could be wrong. But yeah, unless they sold it off. That's been there for a good bit of time. That Congresso building, y'all see that Congresso building right there, right? That Congresso building was an abandoned factory. Again, Congresso bought it and they didn't knock it down. They just rehabilitated the existing factory that was there and they brought it back to life. And now Congresso hosts a wide variety of family resources, childcare programs, employment programs, nonprofit stuff and stuff like that. Congress was supposed to help the Latino community. This empty lot right here, they've held several carnivals in this lot. Obviously it was once a factory. You already know, I don't need to tell you again. What happened to the factory? Pop quiz. It burned down, guys, duh. <laughs> yeah, but aside from it burning down, they held many carnivals here. It was like the most ghettoest, smallest hood carnival ever. They had the Ferris wheel. They had all the little carnival rides. But the thing is, you see how now there's like dirt on the ground? Back then, I used to be filled with rocks and grass and stones. So like, <laughs> kids used to go in there, go to a carnival, but you had to walk through rocks and all of that stuff. If you go back and you look at my vlog about Ugly Betty, which is my Honda Civic, and I talked to you guys about how I got pulled over when I was 13 years old for doing donuts and 360s on 3rd and American Street. This is the corner I got pulled over at. I was in that lot right there coming out and I started doing donuts and 360s. And there was a festival right here. Don't ask me why, it didn't occur to me as a dumb young 13 year old that I shouldn't be doing donuts and 360s. And there was a bunch of police parked on this avenue. When I came out of that lot right there, they all surrounded me, three cop cars, and they pulled me over right there. And I pulled over and I had to get out the vehicle. They gave me a ticket, I had to get out the vehicle, go home, get somebody that was licensed to come and pick it up. So I got fortunate there. Not everybody gets that fortunate. That right there was once a building it got knocked down probably like two years ago. It got bought out, knocked down. It was like garages. No longer garages now, as you can tell, because it's gated up. 
which means eventually it's going to get worked on and it's going to get rehabilitated this side of philly hasn't got hit heavy with gentrification yet key word i say yet it hasn't got hit yet but i promise you it will get hit with gentrification and that cane or allegheny all that stuff that y'all see that that is considered the hood the hood the ghetto that's going to get cleaned out i'll project within the next 30 to 50 years it's going to take a little bit longer to clean out the top end of north philly you know like the hood hood indiana cambria westmoreland tioga ontario but i promise you it will get gentrified and it will get cleaned out and before you know it i don't know where all the residents going to move to they're going to move to new york or something if you keep going north <laughs> or northeast something like that but yeah guys on this side behind me the, those factories have been there for a great period of time they've been there since i was a kid what happens is you can tell because those bricks were all original bricks and i actually like that that style that they do there what they'll do is they'll pressure wash all of the bricks and then they'll brick point them so that's pretty neat this building right here behind me it was once an empty building you see with all the kids painted on the side of it we used to play handball on the side of it at third and somerset well congresso the school now congresso has a school they they took over that right there was once an empty lot and what they what, what did congresso do they closed this down they bought it and i guess they united everything and they built this right here which is a school i'm not sure if it's a middle school or an elementary school it might be a middle school because now middle is elementary right anyway they united this whole entire strip and now it's a school for children and that's a brand new building that's a brand new facility as you can tell by all the cement and everything if you've been with me throughout the vlog year american street is nothing new to you because i did several motivational speeches day and night walking up the north side and south side of american street Ooh, a penny find a penny pick it up all day long you have good luck oh yo i'm rich rick james itch oh yo my my umbrella my umbrella's going hey yo, i collect pennies so if y'all don't want your pennies feel free to mail them to me <laughs> let me know send me all your pennies Send me your pennies. Yeah, guys. So right now we are on the 2800 of American Street. Check it out. This block is famous from Streetscapers. If you guys check out my Streetscapers series, we shot a couple of episodes on this avenue right here. And behind me, right there, you're going to see a garage. That garage has been there for many, 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 many years. So it hasn't got bought out yet. Behind me, you guys are going to see the empty gated lot, right? The empty gated lot was bought by Congresso, I believe. I believe Congresso bought it. You see Congresso right there? The school that I was talking about that they made. Right now, it looks like they're using it for the teacher parking. But I won't be surprised if in the future, they're going to sell out. Because look at behind me. There's two lots. There's that lot and there's this lot. Both of them are going to end up getting bought out. Same thing with this one right here. That's the back of the garage. That's going to end up getting bought out too. See how it looks? It separates from the railroad tracks on American Street. Then it goes to this large center island. It's like a grassy island. And you see how it, it lifts up right there? And this house is right there. Believe it or not, when gentrification hits this, they're gonna make offers on all these houses. They'll buy out whole blocks. Investors will come buy these homes. These homes right now are probably going for 23,000, 35,000, which is nothing. People finance cars for, for 30,000 for 30, bucks. You know what I mean? And they'll be lucky if they go for 30,000. Some of them might go for 18 grand, 20 grand. On the high end, maybe 50 grand. And that's because they put a lot of details into it but that's a whole nother story we could talk about on a different vlog right now we're reaching the end of this side of american street we're hitting american and indiana and this is where it stops now american street continues after allegheny it continues then it stops again then if you go to like the northeast american street again it continues yes guys it continues and if you go down south philly like past washington avenue there's an american street down washington avenue guys i just wanted to give you a hood tour on what's known as the ghetto side of american street this is just a little bit of knowledge from your boy tune i'm sure a lot of people who are familiar with the city and are from the neighborhood would appreciate this footage because in 10 15 years i promise you my videos are going to come up they're not buzzing now they may not be buzzing now but this is going to be history i'm capturing history guys and i'm very fortunate to have you guys watching history with me so that's enough for today's vlog guys let me know your thoughts Comment below and I'll check you guys out tomorrow. Peace.